Hello, sweet friends. I've got a juicy question for you today as part of our Dear Chela. And this came from the lovely Jackie in response actually to a recent written piece that I put out into the world all about heat and discipline and kindness. So this response comes in quoting myself. This is a quote from it. In the notes, you can see the article if you're curious about what it is that I'm referring to. But in it, I say, I've worked so hard to not work so hard. And Jackie says this, boom, I'm so deep into this unfurling. I would have never guessed it would take so long to try to shift this, read an ongoing process. I feel ya. Seems like we're just never one and done with things, are we, Jackie? After a big injury from a very normal activity, In July of 2019, this is when the unfurling began. And of course, it took me a fair bit of time to realize that the universe was smacking me upside the head to get my attention, yelling, would you stop already? I just want to pause this note here for a moment. How many of us have so had this? I was traveling once and working at the same time, and my laptop just like died. And And I had multiple people be like, maybe it's time to like scale back. Maybe it's time for rest. I'm like, that is not the message here. (laughs) The message here is I need a new laptop and you can take it out of my cold dead hands, which was the beginning of my first very significant burnout. Wouldn't be my last because read work in progress. So for you watching, listening today, maybe there have been some smacks over the head that slowing down, exiting the grind is a need for you, is on the horizon for you. So hopefully this beautiful letter from Jackie and what we riff on today is going to support that exploration. So she goes on to say, I'm working so hard to be okay with not working so hard, finding purpose outside of the grind after 30 plus years of grinding. When I layer on the lifetiming of retiring on the horizon, I mean, we stop having anything to contribute after we hit 60s, right? I see a belief we can unpack. It is so sticky and I run into energy blocks not knowing my next direction. I'm grateful for my community support and my family family and friends. But here's the question. How do I know, see, feel when I've shifted away from the grind? Jackie, thank you so much for this question. And I think that this is one of those questions that we don't just simply answer, but really need to live. And the living of it answers it as we unfold and we learn about stuff. And I love how you said, how do I know, see, and feel? So I have some thoughts on this. First, there are a couple of things that you shared in here that feel really important to touch on and and knit into what I'm thinking for this answer. Uh, So one is finding purpose out of the grind. And I know many people, I've worked with a lot of people moving into what some call a twilight career or into retirement, especially after a significant amount of grinding or working where our identities or our sense of value and contribution are knit into productivity and knit into working. And so that flag for me right there is sitting with and exploring the ways in which grinding has given a sense of purpose and being curious about what that's about, like really specifically in what ways. And I'm going to share some of my personal experience. So that might knit into that as well. But I think it's really common in the dominant culture. There's there's an excessive value on productivity, on work and our, our value as human beings being in our work roles. And so it's very easy and normal to find a sense of purpose through our work. And what I would invite in this exploration is purpose in work being distinct from purpose in grind and how might those feel different from one another. So some of the things that I'd like to riff on, particularly to to help you live and answer this question for yourself of how do I see, feel, and know when I've shifted away from the grind is looking at some beliefs and some behaviors and some ways of checking. But doing that through the investigation of your unique patterns of grinding. So I'm going to share mine because that can be helpful to hear other people's stories and like, oh yeah, I am like that or I'm not like that, but it's going to be different for you than it is for me. And so let's dive into that. So first, you know, I I sensed that this, hey, there's nothing of value to contribute after you're in your 60s was like a tongue in cheek or like point at this 
stinky, disgustingly ageist culture that we're in. And that could be a belief that a couple things could happen. You've either internalized as true. And so then you go, okay, as I'm entering this life stage, then where is my value? How do I express that value? I sense that this also might be a rebellious spirit. And this could be what's tricky is like, no, I'm not going to enter into my sixties. Thank you very much. I'm going to give one of these to culture. If you're listening to the audio version of this, I just flipped the bird and I am going to bring something of value and contribute no matter how old I am. Cause this can also go, you know, if you're, if you're in your twenties and going like, I'm too young to contribute something of significance. That might be a belief that then has you overwork and overfunction and grind. The rebellion against a belief like this could potentially have you grinding in your 60s and in your 70s to show, to prove I have something of value to contribute. So what I'm dancing around right now are beliefs, the beliefs that we internalize. And you may have heard me say this before, but usually the conditional beliefs that we hold, we don't actually see them as beliefs. They occur like the truth and they're usually unconscious. So for me, grind, the grind kind of got me in a sneaky way. And what I mean by this is there was a time where I was a bit flaily in my approach to things like enthusiastic and passionate and driven and going after all sorts of things and taking on a lot and taking on too much and then not being able to carry out all the things that I had taken on. And so part of my maturing as a professional was, was really getting good at keeping my word, not just keeping my word to other people, but keeping my word to myself. And so the keeping my word value of integrity for me, this is a very, this is coming from a really whole place. And over time, also being somebody who just like says yes to a lot of things, that that prioritization of keeping my word and sticking with things and seeing things through created some grind habits, over-functioning habits, overworking habits. So a belief that I am a good, mature, professional person when I keep my word, well, that's, that's a beautiful belief. And it can get overdone, overpushed. Now I'm grinding to, because if I don't keep my word or I pull back on this thing, or I say no to stuff now, somehow I'm less than. So I had to come, that was one belief that I needed to kind of unpack. And another one was really around my, my value and my identity being wrapped up in work and productivity. Again, this is, this one's really, really common. And I think it can be even for folks who are doing work in the world that they're very passionate about, that can also get tricky. Because here's the thing that I want to name about not participating in grind or the pathology of productivity culture. That doesn't mean that we don't bring passion or go into sixth gear for things. And so, and I really want to bring that in because we could say, well, you've shifted out of grind culture if you're like, chill. You've shifted out of the grind if you are moving at a slower pace, if you're not prioritizing being productive, if you are prioritizing rest. But that's not necessarily true because I think part of what we're trying to create with regenerative ways of living and working is to be able to bring full energy and productivity and heat and go, the energy of go and get it done and get it somewhere without grinding ourselves down or extracting of ourselves. And so this kind of links with behaviors and then into ways of checking. So exploring what your unique patterns of belief are around your unique way of grinding. What do you kind of believe about yourself when, when you are gripped in the spell of a grind? And then how does that show up behaviorally? So again, for me, it was like keeping my word, taking on lots of things, pushing through those things. I would have the prioritization of getting the things done, of being productive over my internal signals. My internal signals could just mean my body, like I needed rest, I needed movement, I need fresh air, I needed exercise, I needed a break. Or it even could be internal signals like being mentally and emotionally tired, overwhelmed, distracted, losing focus. Like there are a lot of things that if we're paying attention are telling us, this is too much. It's time to rest. 
So that would be, I think that could be a really interesting investigation for you is to look at what are my unique behavioral patterns when I am in a grind spell. And when I'm in that grind spell, what do I unconsciously check for? So this will take a minute because it's unconscious. So you might not see it right away. And this can actually be something you could take into your day-to-day life and watch for when am I overriding those subtle cues to stop and to pause? What If something else is driving me other than like joyful productivity and joyful expression in my activities, what's driving me? So one of the things that I caught on to, which was the real breaking point for me, which I mentioned in this article, is I will not extract of myself anymore. And so what I noticed is my unconscious way of checking was like, when the to-do list is done, <laughs> like when's that going to happen? We're all dying with a list. So when the to-do list is done, or once I get through these things, so they were these external metrics of the commitments I'd made, the deadlines I've given myself, hitting those. And there would be times where I just didn't have it in me. And I would generate the energy. So I, this is like, I, I want to like do it with my body. Like this is the best I can describe is like, like, how do I like turning on a generator? So I'm turning on a generator to generate and push through something that I don't actually have the reserves for, the energy for, the focus for, the mental capacity for. Now, that can be a fine thing to do sometimes. Sometimes we need to dig deep for the thing. And when you do that repeatedly over time, now it's self-extraction. So that was the pattern that I saw, is I'm checking for these external things. I'm overriding my body. I'm overriding all the subtle cues of it's time for a break. And I'm turning on the generator. So I have needed to develop a new way of checking for when to stop, when to rest. So there's a lot of body stuff for me of like really checking with my energy levels, being able to take micro rests and bigger rests and not just to be able to check for this in productivity cycles, but to be able to be aware of what's happening inside me when I'm resting. Because a lot of people stepping out of excessive productivity or identifying with your value being what you're doing, when you start to rest, when you start to engage in activities that aren't purposeful, I do air quotes there because like, I think we're all weird about that. When we, when you engage in leisure, when you engage in creative practices that don't have an outcome, when you're engaging in things that are nourishing and fill you up, but don't fit into the push, hustle, push, push, hustle, push, hustle. Probably something will happen. Like if you've got a way of being that says, I am a good and valuable person when I'm producing, when I'm giving of myself, when I'm getting somewhere, then when you are not doing something that meets that metric. So for me, when I wasn't doing something that was getting all the shit done on my to-do list, some something starts to kick in that resists the rest, the leisure, the whatever it is that you're doing. So it's both looking at, okay, so, and maybe you can like even take on a persona, right? And I can feel that in myself, like grind Chela, hustle Chela is like husked out generator, okay? Vibrant, joyfully self-expressed Chela, who's getting shit done, is like, There's an exuberance and joyful energy that I don't have to source. It's like flowing through me. And that is not, that's finite. It's not forever. I need to rest this being, this body, this mind. Not, I was about to say, so that, not so that I can go be productive again. That's another thing to kind of watch for is like, am I resting? Am I recovering so that I can get back out there and hustle again? So when you are unpacking and unraveling these patterns, it can be helpful to to have some qualities for who Jackie is, who for you watching, listening, for all the other folks here, who you are when you're when you're caught in a hustle or grind spell, what you believe, how you behave, and what you check for. And then who is the you when you are in a productive 
ambitious moving. And I think it's really important to be able to see and name the qualities that are present there, what beliefs you have, what how the behaviors look and feel, and what you're checking for in that state. Because both of these are productivity states, they're movement states, but one is more regenerative and the other one is depleting. So I think that's important is for you to go, okay, so who is who is this me when I'm moving and productive? But hustle and grind is not part of that the quality. And then when I'm resting or when I'm experimenting or when I'm exploring or when I'm not in go mode, what are the qualities and characteristics there? What do I check for in those times and in those spaces? And being aware of the potential anxieties, contractions, dissociations, like the reactions that you have when you're in a more settled, chill place. So to wrap that up, how do I know, see, feel when I've shifted away from the grind? I would recommend that you play with an experiment and maybe even give yourself a a checking statement. So when I know, see, and feel that I'm in the grind, I am checking for, let's play with it. I am checking for, did I get everything done that I could? Did I give it my all? Do I have anything left? right? Because you might have a way of checking, like if I've got anything left, I better do more. And then what's a way of checking when you've shifted away from the grind? Like, am I, am I producing or enacting from joyful ease? Do I feel rested and full? Am I drawing on support to move me in this next direction? I don't know. Those are some ideas. So I think what's key, the beliefs, the behaviors, the ways of checking related to when you're in a hustle and grind spell and what are the beliefs and the behaviors and the ways of checking when you are not in a hustle grind spell. I hope this is helpful to you. And I wish you so much self-sovereignty and compassion and rebellion and grace. Yeah, this line, again, it is so sticky when I run into energy blocks, not knowing my next direction. You know, what just occurred to me is like, when I when I saw that, I just saw like being in a forest, you know, you can't see the forest through the trees, as they say, you're welcome, a little cliche. But like, I was going and I was on a path and then I'm at another path and now I'm like lost and I don't know my direction. And so Stop and be right where you are and let yourself receive where you are, like receive the trees, receive the ground, receive unseen support. Perhaps for a moment, maybe it's just a breath or it's a day or it's a month. You don't need to know what the next direction is yet. What do you check for to know when you're home? And when you feel yourself at home, look up and feel for what direction you want to move in next. I hope that's helpful. Jackie, thank you so much for your email. Thank you all for being here and I'll see you next time.